Hey, 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 what's up? It's Billy Carson here, AKA Forbidden Knowledge. And I'm here with the great Roderick Martin, my good friend. What's up? Hey, we're here, man. we're here in living color, baby, yes. in living color. It's good to have him here in the studio, in living color, in person. If you don't know who he is, he is an incredible expert on UFOs and has been studying UFOs and with through MUFON and his own personal research for decades. He has his own YouTube channel. He has his own uh, channel on Instagram or platform on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. He's everywhere. Roderick Martin. Make sure you follow him. And what's that, uh, the vocal, uh, the voice uh, app that people use a lot? Which one? The the biggest one you have where you you, where you got discovered first initially. Oh, Clubhouse. Clubhouse, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm he's huge Clubhouse. on Clubhouse. Yep. Matter of fact, he's got he's been put on many TV shows because of his Clubhouse show. Absolutely. And right. then of course being here and uh but first of all, I need to make a disclaimer. <laughs> There's always people said, Where is Billy or hi Billy? Now y'all see us side by side. Okay. <laughs> I have twice the man he is, but not literally speaking, but yeah, literally. But regardless, <laughs> now you see what he got the Hollywood smile. I got a smile. <laughs> you so, so we here. So there we go. <laughs> we here in Living Color. It's going to be a great night. We're going to be talking about, uh, you know, are there UFOs in the Bible? Are they yeah. talked about in the Bible? And a lot of people want to know. There's been a lot of hypothesis through the ancient uh, astronaut theory since the 1960s when Eric, Eric Von Daniken first came out mm. talking yeah. about this, you yeah. know, and, and asking questions. His entire book, Chariots of the Gods, question mark. Mm. Okay. Okay. okay? question mark and so we're asking the question could there be uh evidence of ufos being spoken about in the bible and so you know one of the things that i like to do when i talk about these topics you know i like to bring receipts and i like to bring my hypothesis along with the receipts right, right, right. and so you know in america if you have enough circumstantial evidence you can convict somebody of a crime that's it a witness just just a right. witness now exactly. to do that yeah so when we're talking about these ancient books and scriptures and texts and so forth, and we begin to see a lot of similarities that point in one direction, mm -hmm. it's a form of circumstantial evidence, okay. in my okay. opinion. And so I think that we make a good case for the fact that our hypothesis could mm -hmm. be true, or okay. we could be close to the truth. Got you. You know? And now we weren't back there. We don't. We don't particularly know. We didn't live in that era in that time. At least I don't have that past right. life memory for that. <laughs> well, not they. They erased the memory. They that's, erased. That's the rumor. Blink. Yeah. And so, um, but the thing is, you know, I just based off of my dedicated dedicated years of research, I tend to believe that we're on the right track. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you've already pinpointed. I think a lot of people, if they don't know, I mean, this is where you're going to get the knowledge mm -hmm. you know, right here. You know, and I try to make sure I bring in the wanderers mm -hmm. and then bring them into yeah. forbid knowledge to get there because I believe that there's still a level of people out there, Billy, that yeah. um, it's hard for them to fathom what's going on. Right. You know, they're still at the basic level mm -hmm. of, of going to church every Sunday, but yeah. feeling, uh, you know, I would say religiously and emotionally bankrupt because right. the system doesn't work for them. Right. It didn't work for the parents, so they mm -hmm. they don't have anything. So now they're like, what is really happening? Yeah. Uh, and that's where they need to really find their way here to forbid knowledge. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I agree. And thank you for saying that. One of the things, you know, through my years of research that I found is when you look at religions right. in particular, right? There's there's not that many actually main religions. It's only about seven main religions on the planet. Okay. 85% of the world, though, is religious in some form. In other words, 85% mm. of the planet believe in one of those religions. Yes. And the number one religion out of those is Christianity. Okay. Okay. With the majority of the people in Christianity. Um, however, when you analyze each one of the religions, you find that each of these people, their principal fundamental concept or understanding okay. of the religion is that the God that they're worshiping mm -hmm. is not from earth. Mm. Okay. So when you then take that and you look at the dictionary, Webster's dictionary, right? Okay. All right. And you say, okay, well, what is this? What does this mean? Not from Earth. Let me type this in. Let me do a reverse lookup for the actual that's word that's going to be the definition, because you could do that now with okay. Google and all that. And it comes up in Webster's as alien. <laughs> uh, and okay, and of course they use that for people that's not from this country as right. well. So mm -hmm. yeah, right, kind of universal term. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're not from Earth. Yeah. So if we travel, if we got in a spaceship right now, we're in the ship now. Mm -hmm. But if I took off right now and took you somewhere. 
right? What's going to happen? We're going to land on another planet. If we if we meet people, to, to them, we're going to be aliens. So when do we become extraterrestrials? Because that's like a different terminology. Right. It actually has the same definition. Okay. All Extraterrestrial right. meaning extra meaning from outside the terrestrial of the planet. Okay. All, All right. right. So it, uh, so we're we're coming from outside. A terrestrial is from the planet, and extraterrestrial means from outside. Outside the planet. All right. So it's another way of saying saying alien. Okay. Right. Gotcha. And so we're you know and what the interesting thing is, you they can't argue this fact that their God even Jesus says I'm not of this world according mm. to the biblical text. Okay. And so if you're not of this world, then you're technically an alien. And so what I found early on, this is what I figured this out when I was younger, okay. is that most people are worshiping aliens. That's the actual mm -hmm. term. And they don't know it. And they don't even know it. Right. So they're worshiping aliens and don't, they don't even know it. And so it just became interesting, interesting to me. And I started looking and digging even deeper into the religious text okay. to see if there was something more to this. Gotcha. gotcha. You know? And the more I dug, the deeper I went. And the more I realized that they were putting together terminologies and words based on the era they lived in mm. that were describing the same things that people were describing now in, in close encounters of the second, third, and fourth kind. Gotcha. Well, I think it's kind of, you know, when you look at the basics of it, mm -hmm. you know, like I say, I try to, and for me, uh, it all started with the book of Genesis, mm -hmm. right? Um, and of course, we all, you know, take our children or we go to school and we mm -hmm. learn words right and yeah. so when i start thinking about the definition of the word are right mm -hmm. and i'm like okay that's plural if i came in and say hey our team is going to do this or yeah. or we're going to do this for ourselves you right. know and we this is a collective the group yeah uh and so when genesis chapter 1 verse 26 is let's make man in our image and the likeness of ourselves mm -hmm. i'm like what the heck and, <laughs> and, and i remember asking my mother yeah you know and she's like oh that's the trinity oh, mm -hmm. the, you know the yeah. our thing right right and so it always baffled me since mm -hmm. then. Yeah. Um, and and it's right there, mm -hmm. you know. And when you ask people to read it, some people who are Bible scholars mm -hmm. that, you know, go to church every Sunday, I would say, dumpers, yeah. or whatever, and no point intended, right? Yeah. When they still get to that, it's like they've been taught all these things, but certain scriptures have been skipped over. Oh, they skip over that. And it's like, it's not there, yeah. you know, and along with the Ezekiel, all the different stuff. So mm -hmm. why is that? Why, why yeah. would a pastor that's responsible for the flock mm -hmm. literally don't um, teach them properly. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the reasons I kind of bagged up from the church because yeah. you think on a Sunday, if they say, well, stand up, mm -hmm. everybody stand, mm -hmm. turn the page, such and such, yeah. you turn it. And I'm like, I can read that too. <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden, you know, I started yeah. doing the math. I was yeah. like, well, okay, it's uh, you know, two or more people like us, makes a congregation, just right. the two of us. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it was four in my house. So that mm -hmm. means I can pay tithes to my house mm -hmm. and God can be here. Right. And I got a congregation. I can yeah. pastor my house and I can turn a page and read it myself. Exactly. And, 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 but I don't get it. I don't know why we fall into that. Right. And, and what you said is so key. Yeah. The fact that the Bible says where two or more are gathered in my name, mm -hmm. there I am in the midst of you. Okay. See, I know All the right. Bible like the back of my hand. I know where right. I know that okay. I, I have the Bible memorized. Gotcha. And gotcha. Say, I've, read, I've been reading that Bible since I was one years old. My dad used to take me to bars in Queens, New York, when I was mm. a little kid, okay. three and four years old, put me on the countertop and had me reciting the Lord's Prayer, the 23rd Psalm, and all the Proverbs and everything. Gotcha. Because my memory was so crisp. I could just remember stuff, you know. So right. um, and so I know that Bible like the back of my hand. And so, but you're right. The fact that and the crazy thing is, man, we're like brothers, man. Because yep, I, yep, I, yep. I listen. Hey, there we are. Right <laughs> I yeah. came up with that same hypothesis when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah. And I realized when I read that, so if me and my brother or me and my mom or my mom yeah. and dad, if we're all in the house together and we're trying yeah. to basically summon or to have a direct connection with the creator, right? Yeah. Then... Then it will appear. It should appear. And he and if he could be over there on Sunday, why right. in the heck he can't be at my house on Sunday too? He's and he's everywhere. supposed to be omnipotent yeah. and omniscient. Yes. Yeah. Two things. Two things. Yeah. So, so if that's the case, then we don't need to go there. You don't need to go there. And I don't need to give them the money. I like what you said, but you put a twist because you added some financial literacy. The fact that instead of tithing to them yep. and giving to the money to the pastor so he can buy a brand new Lincoln. Yeah. Or then it went from Lincoln to Cadillac, then from Cadillac to Mercedes is the thing now. Then I knew her now they into all kind of exotics, <laughs> right? They, they there, right? Right. But regardless, the fact that if you take that money, if every one of the people in uh in these communities took that all that money that they gave and put yeah. it back into their own household with through the knowledge of financial literacy, reinvested they can, it. They can use that. 
And there's money that you can set yeah. aside anyway. You're already giving it out. Yeah. Uh, and a true story, I, my brother and his wife, uh, they live by the, the tide. Mm. You know, you tithe, your things are going to yeah. happen to you. True mm -hmm. story. They actually got into financial trouble when mm -hmm. one of them lost a job. Mm -hmm. Looked on their books mm -hmm. over that two and a half year span. Yeah. Gave the church over twenty three thousand dollars. Wow. And could not get three hundred for the electric bill when they needed it. Mm, that's a fact. I've known was, several yeah. people with that problem. Yeah. Uh, one person contacted me, was begging, 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 and I was like, I asked a question. I said, Well, you know, because they were trying to get me to go to this church. This is a, okay. a while back, about yeah. ten years ago. And I said, well, how much money have you given over the years? I've given tens of thousands of dollars. I said, and you can't even go to the church and ask them for a few hundred million dollars? There you go. They won't do it. And it was somebody else who wanted me to invest in one of their businesses. Mm. And, and you know, the concept for me, it was it was too based on religion. So okay. it was dogma. Gotcha. Yeah. But however, you can open up a business. This is America. That's it. But I said, why don't you go back to the church? Because you've been given your 10% and plus more. And don't and volunteering and everything else yeah. for decades. Why don't you get the church to give you ten thousand ten thousand dollars? You know, they won't do it. Man, I mean, and also, I grew up uh, and ran track. I'm mm -hmm. a lot smaller than I am today. Yeah. And, uh, and and my coach was like a father figure. And I remember a conversation as though it was sitting here today. Mm -hmm. He had all of us sitting around. It was mm -hmm. about twenty of us. Yeah. And he gave us, he said, I'm going to give y'all some advice mm. if you ever get in a bind in life. Mm. He said, if all fails, mm -hmm. go into ministry. You mm. can get a job and you can make money. <laughs> you can make money. <laughs> he, that's what he told us. Yeah. I'm sure as daily. I'm yeah. saying he stood there and he said, I want all of y'all to know if all fails in your life, yeah. go into ministry, you will get money. That's the worship gene that was inserted into mankind, right? Yeah. Uh, thanks for the donation. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna or their God claims that Manu is the father of men. Did we find Thoth again? I don't know. It's interesting that, you know, Thoth is many people. I believe that Thoth is, uh, has been given many names over many eons and many different genre, I mean, many different, um, eons and, and, uh, and generations and different, uh, uh, I would, I guess you would say civilizations that have risen and fallen on this planet. And so if you look at Africa, you have Thoth, T-H-O-T-H. Some people say Toth, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But also, he ruled over the land of Kem before it was Egypt. Now, here it is for 16,000 years. Whoa. Now, this is not according to Billy Carson. This is not according to Thoth. This is according to the ancient Egyptians. Wow. 15,000. 16. 16,000, 16, right? That's a long time. Think about that for a minute. We're talking about super long lifespans that yeah. would give anyone the perception that this being was uh immortal it has to right yeah. gotcha so they thought he was immortal um and, and it just really amazes me that we can't see that these ancestors the culture was so intelligent i mean they left behind megalithic structures that we can't duplicate right. but when they say that a guy Worked with them for sixteen thousand years. We don't. Oh, that can't be real. That can't be real. Yeah, they can't yeah, be real. Not, but we can't. But we can't build a pyramid. <laughs> we don't have no technology today to right. do that. Exactly. And when you go to Egypt and you see the surrounding area where the people live, which is right on the outskirts of where the pyramids are, they're all collapsing structures, all of them. So why do you think, just literally, it's if there if people are saying the word is the word, mm -hmm. you know that's how they like to put it. To yeah, the word is the word. But the word is there are some words in there mm -hmm. that gives them the indication that there is more to the story. Yeah. Why don't many people get curious? The thing about it is, is the programming is so strong. OK, the programming code from the time of the age of one to the age of seven, it generates who you're going to be when you grow up. Mm. And the programming code that you get from the time you come out of that womb all the way from one o'clock, one, one years old. I'm sorry, one o'clock, one o'clock, one, one years old. One years old. We'll go with that. <laughs> I'm going with my alien time frame. <laughs> we'll go that with that. one year old, that's when it really kicks in. Like mm. the mind turns into a complete sponge. One to seven, all of a sudden, between one and seven, all the coding is coming in from your parents, your grandparents, your relatives, your friends, mm. the TV programming, the schooling that you may be getting, right? All this is coming in and it's creating who you're going to be. It's creating your actual personality that you're going to have when you become an actual adult. 
But we got human natural curiosity, though, yeah. right? As kids, well, I, I would assume most of the kids would be, you know. Right. And then it's beat out of them, you know, don't ask. That's this the problem. Bro, this is what the word says, and yeah. the word is the word. And Yeah, as soon yeah. as you question, see, I was fortunate. My mom didn't mind me questioning things. Mm. But a lot of people, as soon as they question, they get told, don't you dare question the Lord. Oh, some people like that. Don't ask, don't, you know, don't listen, mm. smacked, right? Especially you talking about religion and oh, church. Man. Oh, man, listen. Yeah. Uh, they, you get yelled at, you get put on punishment, you know, and so you're now you're being conditioned. Oh, I, I can't question this. I can't question this. Now your curiosity is being stolen from you. Right. And then you just become another soulless avatar walking through the matrix. But you have you've seen photographs of videos of well-known pastors going back to Egypt. Mm -hmm. They're going back. They have to have discovered what you discovered. Oh, yeah, they got there. it all. They know you know what I'm saying? They yeah. have to have known yeah. or know why don't they come forward yeah. and the fact of they know they're doing the big lie and you're going to go to heaven for that? Well, yeah. the heaven they think, you know? This is one pastor that I know that lives in West Palm Beach, Florida. Okay. I've known him since, uh, wow, 2007, I believe. He has become an expert on the Anunnaki now, an expert on the oh, Anunnaki. Still. Okay. He knows all about it now. I mean, you know, he, he knows all the ins and outs, the ups and the downs, but he's still a pastor. Yeah. And so I come to this conclusion after having many talks with him and understanding that this guy is still going to stay in that pulpit. He has developed his entire, um, you know, finances, uh, his kids' college tuitions, mm -hmm. his wife, his mortgage, his car payments. Based on the system. Everything yeah. is based on that system. Yeah. And so if he now jumps up with all the new knowledge and understanding the real information, which he has disclosed to me, he now loses all that money. He has to go find a real job. Mm. He has to go find another way to capitalize or to monetize himself. And yeah. it's too hard for him to conceive a way to do that, to achieve the level that he's at right now. So his only option is to stay in that pulpit and keep pitching the bull crap. Yeah. Well, you know, there you go. Um, that green crack you know, yeah. stuck on it. But I, you know, I think really as, as we, you know, being a UFO investigator, you know, one of the main questions, I still get people will ask, mm -hmm. are UFOs real or is the aliens out there? And I'm talking everyday people, mm -hmm. right? And you would think, you know, they asked me this question, Billy, and and they'll go, well, what do the aliens look like? And, right. what and I try to set it up nicely. Yeah. And I say, are you sure you want what I'm about to say to you? Yeah. Well, what do they look like? And I said, well, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. And I hit them hard. I go, boom. And it's like, what if we look like them? Mm, boom. And they'd be like, what? Yeah. I said, what if we look like them? Right. Now, that go, go explore now, mm -hmm. and you'll find out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly it. What if we look like them? You see, what people don't realize is we are the aliens. There you go. Yeah. And before I go into talking, we're going to go into some Bible verses here shortly, but I'm glad you brought that up. I did a big lecture um, a few years ago where I talked about this brand new discovery in astrophysics mm, okay, being taught at all universities that teach astrophysics around the world. Mm. They discovered something very interesting. They discovered that where we are in our solar system, in a Milky Way galaxy, we aren't originally from here. Mm. Our they know this. They know this. Mm. Our entire solar system is connected to another galaxy called the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. Okay. Not the Sagittarius constellation. Okay. The Sagittarius dwarf galaxy. We've discovered now that the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy is being gobbled up by the Milky Way galaxy. Mm. And the pinpoint of where the insertion or the merger is happening is right where we're located. Right here. And, right here. And that right. our solar system is actually from Sagittarius. And that that means that we are all aliens to the Milky Way galaxy. We don't okay. even belong in the Milky Way galaxy. So what implication, if it's sucking things up, what's the possibility of Earth being pulled into that? Well, we're here now. So what so happens is we, okay. we've, we've been absorbed and pulled in. This is why in early on stages there were a lot of collisions, a lot of the collisions with planets and moonlets and other objects. Okay. They call them rogue planets and rogue, rogue suns and brown dwarfs and red dwarfs that are just rogue floating throughout that have no particular set orbit that are just mm. flying through. And they found now that there's millions of them. Millions. And this is because of this merger between Sagittarius and the Milky Way. And what's interesting is this right here is the Enuma Elish and the Seven Tablets of Creation. 
This is originally was Sumerian cuneiform that was translated way back in the 1800s. But in the Enuma Elish, it tells you exactly what astrophysicists are now teaching in college. Gotcha. That this happened. Okay. It's all in the Enuma Elish, all of it. This text is over 8,000 years old, and that's been copied from other older ancient tablets as it's been copied and keep them fresh and you know safe. Now you can see a copy of this at the British Museum in, in, in England, which I went to and saw it in person. Wow. And so we know now that this text, this ancient text, has been talking about the fact that we ourselves in this galaxy are not from here. As though that someone brought us here? No, it's a gravitational merger. So merger. as Sagittarius okay. is floating, Sagittarius is another galaxy spinning and floating through, and Milky Way was spinning and floating through, and they just, the Milky Way is so massive, okay. it sucked in. They just drew it in and it collapsed and, you know, collided, and then it's been absorbing all the planets right. and suns in there and making them now recirculate through our galaxy. Okay. So we've been just basically grown, you know, by, by I don't know, one-fourth percent. We've, uh, we've absorbed, or uh, we still are absorbing it. Okay. As gotcha. a matter of fact, check this out. They discovered that when you look up at the sky at night with no light pollution and you see that swath of stars going across the sky, right, right. people have been saying, oh, that's the Milky Way. Guess what? Everybody's been wrong all this time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, that'd be like, that's the Big Dipper or that's the no, Little Dipper. No, not that. Just that, the big, Milky Way. that big band, that big, right. thick band that goes across. Okay. So the constellations are really there, but that big, thick band, it looks like trillions of stars going across and if you're in the sky with no, no mm. light pollution. Okay. That is actually the Sagittarius, where it's being warped and pulled into oh, okay. the Milky Way. Wow. And this is being taught in all astrophysics classes, okay, throughout the entire world at universities. Peer-reviewed science, well-documented science, thanks to the web and the and the uh, and the and the Hubble uh, telescope. So why is it? I think we spoke a little bit about this today. Uh, I've been doing some research and reading, and they start talking about the difference between a religious community and a scientific community. Mm -hmm. And one in particular is how they were saying that the scientific community believes don't or believes in creation, but don't believe in the creator. Mm -hmm. More of I think more could be the God particle that we talk about, right. or whatever. But the religious community believes in the creator. Mm -hmm but not the creation, mm -hmm. you know? And so, but no one is venturing to the source of the soul, right? but they all are looking this way. So right. why, why is this happening? It's happening because we get focused on one perspective or another. Okay, It's the same divide and conquer tactic that has been going on for eons. We also implement that in our educational system, whether it's religious education or spiritual education or scientific education. The reason why I love spirituality is because it takes a look at both. Mm, it takes okay. a look and says, you know what? There is only one divine spirit. There's only one consciousness. And the quantum physics explains how it works. Mm, when you look okay. at the quantum mechanics and quantum physics, you begin to see what's happening behind the veil. Okay. You begin to realize, oh, wow, this is pretty interesting. What we can see here is that the spirituality that is being explained by quantum physics and quantum mechanics, and it also is explaining our, our, our state of reality that we're experiencing in this third dimension, in this corporeal body. So we can convert, uh, on the spiritual side, we look at quantum physics, okay. and on the physical side, we look at classical uh, physics. And when you look at both of them, it explains the, the micro and also the macro, but it also explains the spiritual at the same time. People don't have the time to dig into that, okay. to research that, to study and learn it. That's why I do a lot of workshops and classes on that exact topic to teach people that you're spiritual. And let me show you the science behind the spirituality. Let me show you how it works. And they love it. Now, we know more wars have been fought over religion. Yeah. What about on a ground level? There may be people in this audience that are now uh, moving toward the curiosity of what we're talking about. Yeah. And they may be married. They have a significant other, their partner, their partner or whoever. How is this gap or now are we going to use the term we're not equally yoked anymore, but yet they're both can, is using the same book for truth, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's not the same as they interpret it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there's a battle in the house. Yeah. Because I had that. Yeah. You know. Right. Uh, what do you say to people like that or could be dealing with it? Yeah. We're well, in a pretty tough situation. <laughs> you know, we're talking about religion. Yeah. I mean, you you talking about. 
you know, hey, the word is this, and they're gonna fight to the end. They're gonna for fight to the death. religion. Yes, they're so gonna fight to the death. What is it? How do we? <clears throat> the, the, in some, I'm not gonna be straight up honest. In some cases, there's no way to resolve it. Okay, yeah. you can uh, ask the significant other if they would be willing to allow you to follow your new found belief and your new found research okay. on the topic and that you see things differently and explain why you see things differently. But if you're in a relationship where open conversation about religion is going to be banished or, or treated harshly, it can become a very tumultuous situation. Okay. And so I was in a situation like that myself. All right. Yeah. And, and I'm not in that situation anymore. <laughs> well, we know that. We, <laughs> so, we know that. You see him smiling. Yeah, the Hollywood yeah, yeah. smile. Yeah. Listen, yeah. sometimes you just got to, you know, when your mind elevates and the other person stays here, sometimes the gap can get so far mm. that it's irreconcilable. It just happens. There's nothing you can do about it in some cases. Now, in some cases, you can work with that person. And some people will eventually come along little by little yeah. if you give them space. If you keep cramming it down their throat and telling them, no, this is the way it really is. You're going to hurt them. You're mm. going to break down their belief system too fast and they're going to be pissed off. And it's going to be anger and frustration and arguments yeah. in the house. But if you give them a little drop some seeds and let it grow, water it tiny little by little and let it grow like from a tiny seed to a full blown tree. You got a chance. Yeah. You see. So but that person has to be one of those people that is, a, is allowing themselves to be willing to take in the information a little bit at a time and grow with it. Mm. And you can close the gap some. You might not ever yeah. get the gap here, but you can close it some and make it livable. But in some cases, you just can't. Because you got to really have someone who at some point where all their lives they believed something to be true mm -hmm. is in a better mental state to find out what was true is not true. Yeah. And the same thing with someone all their lives believing was not true yeah. finds out that something is true and they gotcha. can handle that. Right. So. Yeah. Um, another question, you know, we talked about or both of us did podcasts on these fake UFOs mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. Yeah. But I was getting phone calls mm -hmm. from people that was mentally messed up. Mm -hmm. Like, what is happening? People yeah. that full grown men. Wow. OK. That was normally wouldn't even talk about the subject. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden yeah. decided to make these phone calls. You're mm -hmm. a UFO. And and I didn't want to laugh at them. Right. But I, right. But I did confirm it. anything we have in our skies. We don't know what it is. Is yeah. a UFO. Yeah. Okay. It was a UFO, but not alien technology, right? Right. right. Was it a test run? Because obviously, mm -hmm. people are not going to handle yeah. if one of them parked in front of the White House. Right. Right. So, what was happening, or what could the potential be now that they tested this mm -hmm. thing? I think it's to generate money. So, if you look at uh, where we are as a, as a civilization on this planet, you have one dominant nation, which is the United States. Mm. We dominate the world. And why do we dominate the world? We dominate the world because we have control of space itself. Okay, gotcha. The United States has more access and more control over the space on the outside of the planet, above the upper atmosphere, right? In the stratosphere, above the stratosphere. And so because of that, we have satellites that we control and we can maneuver and manipulate mm -hmm. and we can create, um, you know, zones where nobody else could put satellites and put technology. Okay. okay. And we also have the capability of spying pretty much on anybody anywhere on the planet because we dominate right. space. And also, a lot of our weapons are guided by satellite. Mm. So we can reach out and touch anybody anywhere at any given time. I tell people all the time, yeah. right, there, there's not a military on the planet mm -hmm. that's more powerful than what we have. Exactly. Planet. And they fear all of them. But, right. Yeah. And now, so they we've gone to pretty much every country mm. on in the world and we've uh, installed puppet dictators and we've brought democracy, mm. right? You look at Beirut, you look at, uh, you know, Argentina, you look at uh, Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan, America, just keep going, the list and list, the list goes on and on. Everything can turn to dust. In some cases, economies that didn't, weren't, places that weren't turned to dust, the economies were crashed and turned over to our rule. And so we bring democracy to the planet and uh, those wars generate a lot of revenue. But guess what? There's nobody okay. else to dominate now. We've mm -hmm. dominated everybody. Yeah. So here's the new money. The new money is, see, we kept, they kept getting in trouble for all these trillions of dollars that have been disappearing. Yeah. Where are these trillions? Of, remember, Oliver North had to answer questions in the Senate floor. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so you say, you know what? If we now go to space, we now have a place to send the money. Yeah. So we can say, look, there's potential threats. We don't know what these things are. They're a threat to national, maybe even global security. Yep. 
you know? And uh, because of that, we need to now transfer these. Now we're going to tell you where the trillions are going. We're putting them into space weapons. We're putting them into space machinery, space technology. And so now they can easily redirect money towards that without having to hide it, cover it up, act like they don't know where the money went, which is what they've been doing for decades. Now they have a place. So they have to keep the money machine going in some way. Yeah. And the next new money machine is not going to be blowing up another country. We pretty much did all that already. So now it's got to be, okay, we're taking it to space because we got to create this space race. We have to create this space uh, technology. They have rods from God. They have all this technology in space now. Crazy tech. And so that's how they can redirect because it keeps them paid. There was a article, and you guys can fact check this. Someone do it and let us know in the chat. Look up Morgan Stanley uh, told all of their uh, financial people to move into the space economy. They gave 10 things for the future to put your money in. This was about last year, but you can Google it. And if somebody do, post the article for somebody to have it. But Morgan Stanley told all of their financial, you know, whatever we want to call these people. Yeah. But said, here's the 10 things. One was space tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, one was satellites and everything else. Mm. Space mining. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just so many, but they said, this is where tomorrow's money. That's where, it's where your going. investments need to go yeah. into the new space economy. Which is why I opened up yeah. First Class Space Agency five years ago. What? That's my tech company. Yeah, look it up. Anybody can Google it. Oh, sugar, it. honey, iced tea. <laughs> All right. First class space agency owned by Billy Carson. Many articles, news. I've been in many. Uh, I've been in London Times. I've been in uh, New York Times. I've been in a lot of a lot of big articles gotcha. about it. It's a tech company. We do research and development for space technologies. We don't actually launch rockets, but you have to have companies that provide ancillary benefits or products and services to yeah. space agencies. Like Elon Musk isn't sitting there making radiation hardened computer circuit boards. <laughs> no, he buy that stuff from us or somebody else. You see, yeah. so that's why I started my tech company, Space Tech. I invented a battery. It's a revolutionary battery, and so all these different types of things. You know, we have to have. Uh, yeah, if you have to look towards that, that's the next big thing. And so with Morgan Stanley, they've been they're right on point with that. Yeah, and this was about a year ago when they yeah. did this. So I know we took a detour. Yeah, yeah. So for the scriptures in the Bible, yeah, what would be if someone out here needed to go to war mm -hmm. and to prove the point yeah. that there is UFOs or some remnants of story in the Bible? Yeah. What would be the best scripture or the the yeah. top scripture you think would be the one that if they just put it down in uh -huh. front of somebody and said? Read it, study it, interpret right. it, meditate on it, and come back tomorrow. Right. Even a, even a bishop, even yeah. the a biggest of the the pastors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna look at the book of Ezekiel. Okay, all okay, right. Ezekiel. Now, let me answer this question first. Uh, Harm says, "Was Jesus Christ one of the Anunnaki?" In my personal opinion, I believe he was half human, half Anunnaki. That's my personal opinion on that. <clears throat> uh, I missed a couple of you other guys who donated money. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for donating. All the donations go to help underprivileged children. Not one of those, not one penny goes into our pocket. We actually go actually help children with that money. And that goes to communities and schools. And you can see a video with the kids talking about the benefits of that program right here on this YouTube channel. The video Doing was done probably about a month ago. That lets you know the the lives that you touch with your money. Exactly. Don't, don't come in here and pay for the castle. No, it don't. This money it don't is touch castle. the castle. It, it, don't, it don't pay. It can't come close. <laughs> yeah, it is a castle. It has, yeah. actually has a water moat out there too, for real. <laughs> Yeah, it, does, it can't it can't come close. But yeah, so that was a good question you asked. So there is, um, okay, let me answer this one question before I pull up the-, the No, no problem, no, it's your show, I'm here with Who you. Who are the black-headed people that are talked about by the Anunnaki? So the black-headed people, which are mentioned many times in the Sumerian tablets, the Sumerian cuneiform tablets, are the black people uh, that lived in all throughout where the extended version of Africa before Africa was given the artificial line to make it the shape it is right now, it extended way out to what we now call the Middle East. At that time, it was called Meso Mesopotamia, right, in ancient times. Uh, and so those were the people that were uh, there and living amongst these Atlantean people at the same exact time. Mm. Not according to Billy Carson. I got to always say that. Great. Not Very according good. to Billy Carson. According to the people that lived in that time, they left behind millions of stones talking and writing about these people that were there. With them okay. called, they call them the Anunnaki. In the Bible, they're called the Anak, mm, right? Okay. So there's many different names for these beings, which we're going to talk about tonight too. But they, um, they, they say they lived there, and these were uh, black people that were inhabiting and living uh, throughout this region. Wow. Uh, according to these ancient tablets, again, mm. not according to Billy Carson. I'm not one of these people that like to just 
hey, man, this is what happened, right? No, I, everyone can go look all of this stuff up okay. because you can go to the the, the uh, UCLA, UCLA online CDLI cuneiform library, mm. and you can actually grab the stones off the virtual shelf and drop them into a virtual translator and read everything for yourself. Meaning yeah. documentation v conversation. Exactly. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm going to open up my email because I sent myself a link earlier. I just meant to do this before I got to this point, but I'm going to pull this up right now. And we're going to pull up uh, this email that I sent to myself real quick <clears throat> on the book of Ezekiel. I'm going to read a couple of, uh, of these uh, verses to you here. So I'm in Ezekiel, right? And this is pretty interesting because in Ezekiel, we're talking about a person that witnesses something okay. in the sky. Not only does he witness something in the sky, he begins to describe it. Mm, he okay. describes it with fervor. In other words, he's grabbing for words that and he's trying to put this together. Because to get he don't know saying. what he's looking at. There's exactly. no name and for what he's seeing. He's right. just got to come up with something. Exactly. So it says, you know, uh, look, 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 Ezekiel 1, 5. And in the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In their appearance, their form was as human. Mm. He's talking about humanoids. Humanoids. Got feature characteristics. Right. Okay. In the fire. Now, this fire was flying in the sky. Right. Okay. Now, how many... Do you see fire flying in the sky when you go outside? Nope. Fireflies, maybe. <laughs> they ain't got no but, people inside so of that, them. So that had to been... Now, would that have been old technology for them, but new mm -hmm. for us? They're probably exactly. using some... Like, nothing has been invented new. But, right. So we're just behind. You know? We're behind. We're talking about beings that were pro probably a few hundred thousand to maybe uh, almost a million years ahead of us, depending oh. on which ones you talk about visited, visit Earth. You know, so technologies like uh, they could have some type of engine that's red, that glows red when it moves. Okay. Right? And through the windows, Ezekiel standing on the ground looking up, it, windows are big enough or they're low enough that he could see people inside. So I'm going to play pastor though. Yeah. I read the you know, you guys, the congregation. And I'm going to say, <laughs> and God said the fire was looked like the living creatures yeah. and the parents, therefore. you know, And somebody came up and asked me. I yeah. said, those are just angels. Don't worry about it. And that right. was God's chariot, you yeah. know, with that then cover yeah. them to not know what's going on. Yeah, it would block them from even thinking about it. But the more you read this, the more you go, you start asking questions. He says, under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands. All four of them had faces and wings. So now he's trying to describe the vehicle itself mm, in, in, okay. in a way, right? <clears throat> but each of them had four faces and four wings. This is pretty interesting. This description, he's now you gotta yeah. remember in this time frame, you're talking about the terminology and the words that we have today didn't even exist yet. Right. He's doing the best he can to extrapolate what he saw. Right. And he's completely amazed by this. He says in Ezekiel 1, 9, and the wings of one touched the wings of another. Each one went straight ahead. They did not turn as they moved. Mm. And he said, their legs were straight. Their feet were like those of a calf and gleamed like brunished bronze. He's talking about like landing gear and stuff now. Okay. Things on something underneath this vehicle that had these wings that was flying to and fro that had moving parts of some time that glowed red as it was moving, which probably was some type of exhaust, right? But at the same time, it had... It had legs on the knee. Because you would think when we talk about UFO landings, it's mm -hmm. going to be the, the, the foot. It's going right. to be kind of a, a shape. So right. for them, seeing the prongs, it yeah. looks like, yeah, from exactly. up above. Yeah. From up above, right. Yeah. Come, obviously, they were getting ready to land this thing, yeah. which they ended up landing. He said it looks like burnished bronze. He didn't say it looked like a bird's foot or he, he burnished bronze. Mm -hmm. He's talking about some kind of metal. It looked metallic to him. Such were their faces that they had two wings spreading out upward, each wing touching that of the creature on the other side, and each had two other wings covering its body. Their faces looked like this. Each of their four had the face of a human being, mm. and on the right side of the face, a lion, and on the left side, the face of an ox. We're talking about emblems and logos. Okay. We're talking about the fact that when you look through the, through the vessel, or maybe through a helmet even, you could see a face of a person. But on one side, it had, the, you know, the face of mm. an ox, maybe, and, the, and on the other side, the face of an eagle. Just like, you know, we, we, put, we put patches on our right. chest in the, the military branding, yeah. and, and, and space. Insignias and all that. Insignias yeah. and all that kind of stuff. This is branding. Yeah. In my opinion. I'm not saying it is branding for sure. What I'm and, telling and they, you, in my opinion. And they found reminiscent of, what was that? Was it Rendlesham Forest or uh, Roswell, where they found metal with? signature you know so it's not uncommon it's been not been done yeah it's been it's been found in a few a few places yeah 
there's actual artifacts. I have a copy of the El Bal artifact upstairs, an actual replica of it. That from the I'm going to go up there and check it out. Yeah. I'm going to oh, go yeah. right through the castle in the <laughs> elevator, of course. <laughs> of course the, we have elevators. The Starwells is a little too much. Yes, he does have an <laughs> elevator. Spare no expense, like Jurassic Park. <laughs> Everything around here, spare no expense. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. <laughs> and so the El Bal artifact, you know, it, it has an uh, alien in there with, it had, looks kind of like what this is, but he has on one side, he has got this uh, eagle. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he's got the Pleiades also as the emblem, the mm. Pleiades star system, you know. Been out there traveling, yeah. Yeah, you know, so it's pretty interesting. So as you start to compare this stuff to ancient artifacts, you got you start to go, wow, what the hell is going on? Then he says, Ezekiel 119, when the living creatures move, the wheels beside them move. Wheels. And it, this guy knows what a wheel is. Okay. This guy is a in, super intelligent person. So would the wheels be more gear shafts or something? So we remember they had that alien with the thing. Yeah. Know, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be something that has to do with landing. I mean, like when you land a plane, you know, sometimes you got wheels that come down and landing gear. Okay. You know, it could be that or it could be something else that looks like a wheel that's moving. Mm. Um, well, whatever it is, it's technology. And and it was circular because yeah. he's making the description. Yeah. Yeah. And wheels and the spinning wheels. So a, a wheel is no, uh, no matter how basic you think a wheel is, it's technology. A wheel is one of the first greatest pieces of technology to ever exist in our current, yeah. you know, up run again to our high level of civilization. This is this is not the first time we've been here. Gotcha. And so we rediscovered the wheel. Yeah. And the wheel, when we rediscovered it in recorded history, is one of the greatest inventions of all time. <clears throat> so then he says, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 120. Whenever the spirit would go, they would go. When the wheels would rise along with them, because mm. the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. There you go. Okay. All right. And but this is so profound, though. Yeah. Why is it not believable to a point that we're talking about something off world? Because the dogma, the dogma of religion tells you that this is all made from him, he, God, the God, the man, the flying wizard with a magic wand that looks like a man with a white robe on and a big white gray beard and him, he, him, won't he do it? He's the one and he, no, it's not that at all. Gotcha. And what's interesting about this story as we go through it, you'll see that this, this thing lands and puts him inside of it. <laughs> what? Yeah. We so a first hand count. A first hand account. This is the first, one of the first alien abductions in, in recorded history. Okay. Right. And so uh, he says, each one went straight ahead. Whenever the spirit would go, they would go without turning as they went. When the creatures moved, I heard the sound of their wings, like the roar of rushing waters, mm -hmm. like the voice of the Almighty, like tolement of an army. When they stood still, they lowered their wings. The creatures sped back and forth like flashes of lightning. When you hear the UFO description, what does it tell you? Instantaneous acceleration, zip, zip, that's right there. That's exactly yeah. what you hear in these UFO MUFON reports, yep. don't you? Yep. Mm -hmm. right? We even have stuff like that on video. And, and why, once again, we're not going to have UFOs being sitting ducks for us to shoot them down right. with our F-16s or right. F-22. We can't catch them. Can't catch them. Can't even. Catch so that's the same description as, as what we see right now in modern times. Yeah. As they moved, they were going any of the four directions the creature faced. The wheels did not change direction as the creatures went. We're talking about something that's moving and changing direction just almost like, we like see. Almost like the five, um, you know, things that they talk about observables. Yes. You know, you know transmedium technology and all. And it's just now into a whole new our future words right there yeah our future words this is yeah. the ancient version of our future words yeah he's describing what said what it says in the ufo report from the government yep literally oh where we go like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day so was the radiance around him this was the appearance of the likeness of glory of the lord when i saw i fell face down and i heard the voice of one speaking so now these things and came down and somebody then came out of this thing and said something to and him. talked to him right where, where is mcdonald that's right. you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah and that's how it got started so he said he said <laughs> <laughs> then there came a voice from above the vault over their heads as they stood with lowered wings and he says their rims were high and awesome and all four rims were full of eyes around. He knows what rims are. They had rims. They mm -hmm. understood what a rim was back then. So he's yeah. talking about the bolts and things that hold the, the wheel onto this vessel. Yeah. So he saw it. Yeah. He saw the, the, the bolts that hold it on. Now, this could, the, now, could stuff huh? like that, let's say we're looking at today's inventors, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, somebody who invented the wheel or because of all this new technology and we know nothing's new. It's yeah. been, but could stuff like this uh, 
begin the process of where we're now having new technology, new things, because not only they seen it, mm -hmm. now we have to deal with, with somebody reborn or right. came back and back. And now they have this knowledge unknown mm -hmm. building our future from yeah. the past. Well, this kind of interaction with, with a with, with an advanced civilization, with a less advanced civilization, this kind of interaction that's been described here, it alters the future reality that's of what I mean. where we yeah, go. That's what I meant. Yeah. Because yeah, now yeah. it's influencing technologies that yeah. didn't even exist and might not have existed for thousands of more years. Yes. But now because of this interaction, they violated probably a prime directive like they were doing Star Trek, right? There's a prime directive here where they violated that and came down and showed this tech, interacted with this uh, civilization and that was uh, everything. and change everything, which probably why we don't get contact and interference with mm -hmm. them today. Right. They might have some policy out there that yeah. does not alter. The well, what you said was in this. So this is the book of Enoch, right? The book of Enoch. And in the book of Enoch, they actually another prime directive violation. Mm. They came down and taught human beings how to make weapons in the book of Enoch. And that was a problem. That was a big problem. Okay. A big problem. Advanced weapons that we didn't have yet. Big problem, right? Okay. Not like AK 47s, but weaponry that for their time in the area that they could create, but they didn't even have the concept of mm. that kind of weaponry yet and how to utilize it, right? Like, gotcha. like how to make the right type of swords with, with this type of steel to use and all that kind of mm. stuff, right? Yeah. And so, man, it took Born arrows and yeah. the precision of being able to flight, make that thing fly yeah. and hit somebody. He took yeah. them to the next level that, well, not he, but it was a group of, of these beings that came from heaven to earth in the book of Enoch engaged mankind and taught them how to make weapons and go to war. Mm -hmm. And that totally changed our trajectory, like overnight, you see? We're already barbaric anyway. Exactly, you know, they just, they just enhanced it. Uh, so now, here it goes. So speaking out above the heads of the living creatures was <coughs> one, something like a vault, sparkling like a crystal and awesome. Above the vault over their heads was what looked like a throne of lapis lazuli, and high above on the throne was a figure like that of a man. Mm. Underneath their vault of wings were stretched out toward the other, and each had two wings covering its body. I saw that from what happened to its waist up, he looked like glowing metal, as if full of fire, and that from there down he looked like fire, and brilliant light surrounded him. I looked and saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud flashing lightning, and surrounded by brilliant light, the center of the fire looked like glowing metal. I mean, how can they <laughs> deny this? You're this gonna is say, a UFO, man. This how do they deny it? <laughs> this is a UFO. In my 13th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day, this is how specific this guy's being. This is yeah. specific. While I was among the exiles of Kibar River, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. This is him. He's seeing God, right? Okay. On the month of the of the uh, on the fifth of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoshan. So now he's been he he doesn't been seeing more than more. he's seeing them now. Yeah, and I can keep going he's on, on but contact. long story short, if I keep going on this, you'll find out that Ezekiel was taken into this ship. Yeah, he dropped to his face. Yeah. Right, you can go read the whole book yourself. I can't read the whole book, but he, he dropped to his face. The being said, "No, get up. I'm not your. I'm not I'm your not, God. I'm yeah. not God. Yeah, but we need to take you to meet our homeboy. We got to yeah. take you meet yeah. somebody right quick. He got yeah. he got a word for you. So they took him to their leader." Mm. And this guy, who also wasn't God, told Ezekiel he had to go to this other town and and take them. So this obviously, message. back then they made us saw us almost as equal, right? Equal spirits, maybe, or regardless, don't these particular worship, ones did. Yeah, don't worship us. Yeah, yeah these okay. particular ones they didn't claim to be God. They were like, look, we got to take you to somebody important. Took yeah. him in this thing, took him up into the sky, took him to meet this other guy. Then after he met with this other guy, told him what he wanted him to say, made him eat this note and swallow it. It was bitter in his stomach, made him sick, right, to his stomach. Mm. And told him to take this information, but, like, destroy the evidence of what I gave you to yeah. remember. Memorize yeah. it and then eat it. Eat it. Get rid of it. Right? And yeah. then when he ate it, he got sick, but he memorized what he had to say. <laughs> this is some crazy stuff. Then yeah. he, then they take him back in his ship again and take him to the location, okay. which was like, like a, a five days or six days journey, and dropped him off over there so he could deliver the message. Mm. This is an alien abduction, in my opinion, and, and uh, recorded in biblical text. Uh, the book of Ezekiel, you got to read it because there's no other conclusion. Once this guy is taken into this vessel that he described greatly, and then he's inside of it, now yeah. moving around in it, yeah. there's no more question or doubt what it is. 
time to trust the witnesses anyway, even yeah. today, what's going on. Right. So with this being so profound mm -hmm. um, and described, yeah. you know, why is it still not a um, important piece of history for the masses? Mm -hmm. Well, the dogmas kept it down. It's in that book. It's in that book that the majority of the planet uh, goes by for their what they think is spirituality. But what it really is, is religious dogma. Religion and spirituality are two separate things. People keep trying to combine spirituality with religion. They're totally opposite things. They're not even close. They're not even in the same vicinity. Mm. And so uh, in their brain, they think that they're going after spirituality. But in true fact, they're following dogma. There's no difference between the dogma and the biblical text and of any, you know, Caesar or, uh, you know, yeah. the guy that ruled over Germany back in the day and had them wars. I can't say his name on the YouTube account. You already know what that means. Right. These people were uh, also putting out dogma mm. and people yeah. fell head over heels for that dogma. Yeah. Right. World War One, World War Two. Uh, Vietnam was dogma, yeah. right? The, they lied about the Gulf of Tonkin incident to, to initiate the Vietnamese war, the war against Vietnam, which killed so many people for no reason whatsoever other than making money for 20 years at the expense of, you know, millions of lives. I mean, we just keep going on. It's all dogma. And the dogma is what's blocking people from understanding what's really happening. See, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things about it is being... Here with my man. <laughs> when I want to pick up the phone and it gets complex, I can get the answers right here. But as you all know, you get it every time from being part of the workshops and everything else. And I've said it a million times, and especially subconsciously, you know, learning, seeing, and most people will listen to what you teach and not understand that some of these principles, if not all of them, mm -hmm. work. If it could work for you, if they want to imply it, right. you know, uh, and I've told the story many times when I got here the first time, mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm proud of what you do, you well, know, definitely. You. And, and the lives that you touch. Thank and you. I think, you know, a lot of people don't understand that it takes a lot because literally you could be perceived as mm -hmm. going against the church. Right. And we know the history of that stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm just excited not only as I'm going on my new journey and learning, mm -hmm. but also bringing more people to this thing. And uh, you know, what do we take them? Where, mm -hmm. where would the beginners start? Right. I think the beginners need to start with um, just getting a hold of some basic text the compendium of the emerald tablets which is my book yep the compendium of the emerald tablets just go to amazon.com and type in billy carson it's the number one bestseller in five countries for four years yeah it's number one in america right now again and still and the reason why it says see underneath here what does it say right there read that what, what does that say right there a beginner's guide a beginner's man. guide that's going to get you started. The next thing you want to do is you want to read the Enuma Elish and the Seven Tablets of Creation. And you also want to get another book by William Bramley called The Gods of Eden. Okay. Between those three, that will get you in the direction of understanding, whoa, there's a lot more here that I didn't consider. There's a lot more here that's breaking down my belief systems. I need to dig deeper. I need to research. And I'm realizing that what I'm reading here from these books made it into religious text. Mm. And I'm, now I'm seeing where the original, now I'm getting to the original sources. So if you, this is just kind of a, not a detour question, but since we have this book, let's just say we know this is something they need to read. We just yeah. talked about it. Mm -hmm. How did the Bible, Christianity, grow immensely and we can't get stuff like this mm -hmm. to grow? You know, it's because the dogma is that powerful. It's you got to remember, if yeah. you uh, if you look in the history <clears throat> and you look at the papal inquisitions. Mm -hmm. So during the papal inquisitions, guys, for 700 years, they tortured and killed 80 million people. Oh, that's enough to bring to Christianity around. around the world. <laughs> now I understand how slavery works. Slavery. Right. First person got off the boat, said, I ain't moving nothing. Yeah. Yep. The second so, person says, no, don't hit me by exactly. hand. Do it. <laughs> well, you said it's accurate. So what did, they, what did they do when they came to bring this Christianity to the world? It wasn't brought by love and good news and good mm. works. It was bought they by force. They forced it on them. Yeah. Force. They go to an indigenous region of the planet, and then they what? They get the sage. They get the chief. They get the head person in charge. Yeah. Bring them to the front. 
bow down and this is our religion. You're going to worship us and you're going to worship this and you're going to do that. Blah, blah. Yeah. And if he fights back, which of course initially they did, yeah. then uh, I'm going to strap him up. I'm going to light him on fire in front of everybody. I'm going to whip him, beat him, torture him for days. And now everyone else is going to fall in line. Mm -hmm. And now <clears throat> that first generation, they fall in line, but they they, 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 they remember. Yeah. But yeah. now they know I've got to teach my kids when they come out, this is what they got to do. By the third generation, it's program locked. The All code right. is set. So I know we got yeah. about four minutes left. Yeah. Uh, and then you and Elizabeth is going to come. Yeah. Uh, we got a little bit more because we're going to go to uh, to nine ten. Okay. Well, yeah. cool. All right. Because I was getting ready to talk about the conscious <laughs> award, but hey, yeah. let's keep it going. We got a few more minutes. So, okay. Yeah. yeah I want to show a couple of slides real quick. <clears throat> so, you know, are there UFOs described in the Bible? Right. So I've got this slide here. Let's take, take a look at this. So I said, yes. Keep in mind the Bible translator far back as the 1600s described what they thought were flying vehicles. They didn't use the words we have today because they didn't exist. And uh, to list all the verses that they were in would be a huge task. So what I, what I did was I gave you a breakdown. There are 70 verses in the Bible that describe clouds mm. as vehicles, 15 verses describing pillars as vehicles, 10 describing dwellings as vehicles, 160 verses on lights and fire as vehicles, and there's 17 verses describing spinning wheels. 22 verses describing dark and shining objects and 37 verses of various objects in the Bible described as UFOs and they are not uh, uh, as they are flying furnaces, burning bushes, eagles, wings, smoke, stars and objects that the ancient authors used to describe the fleet of the first vehicles of the Elohim. So we're talking about the fact that these people definitely uh, were describing or describing, trying their yeah. best to describe UFOs in the Bible. <clears throat> wow. Right. So if you go to Numbers 13, 33, you know, these beings, I think that they were these uh, giants. Giants, you the know? Nephilim, okay. And so, you know, we even saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, the Anunnaki. So the Anunnaki are the Anak in the Bible. Okay, all right. right. Descendants of the Anak that came down, that came from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own sight, and we must have seemed the same to them. So we know these people were massive I wonder if people. they thought the, the giant model didn't work, and then they reduce <laughs> well they kept mating with us okay. so as they, oh yeah with the yeah. yeah when they first got here they were genetically tinkering and tinkering and tinkering they realized that the gravity force on earth was so much less than where they came from yeah they started having health problems this mm. is in sumerian tablets okay and so they as they began some of them started taking human wives and genetically embedding their 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 seed into women and all this and their offspring then were obviously half human, half Anunnaki. That's mm -hmm. what they call demigods in gotcha. Roman and okay. Greek and all that mythology. They were able to live in our atmosphere. Yeah. Right, exactly. So they started uh, working their way into our gene pool, basically. Gotcha. You know, yeah. <clears throat> and so like I said here, the Bible makes more sense when you realize that it's, it, it was the Anunnaki engaging mankind, okay. not the creator of the universe. See, in the Bible, people are thinking that it's God talking all the time. Mm. And when you when you start reading the ancient text that I told you about, <clears throat> you begin to realize that it's not God talking. Yeah. It's these other people talking. Yes. And that copied over text was put into the Bible and they call them God. That's a big problem. That's the problem. Big You're problem. talking about because in a person's mind for their whole life, they think that they're reading God's words, okay. the creator of everything that they know in the known universe. And in actuality, it's not God's words. And that's probably why people have the problem of knowing there's a God in all of us. Right. Because, because they don't see themselves that way. Exactly. Right? And they've been right. programmed to see it as an exterior entity that, and they believe in that book that that's entity. When you go back into the original translations of the Bible, right. the word God is mistranslated. Mm. It's actually God's with an S. But in the canonized Bible. The again with <clears throat> R, yeah. Let's make man in right. our image. Right. But nobody want to use the, the English. Plural. They yeah, don't the want to do it. Yeah. And so what happened is they accidentally on purpose forgot the S <laughs> to give you what? monotheism a one god religion mm. right okay. <clears throat> so that's what they did so right here is a verse some verses from the bible exodus nineteen twenty. then the angel of the god uh, the angel i'm sorry then the angel of god which i i perceive as a ufo because they're looking up in the sky and if you read before this uh verse okay. you realize that they're looking up and they see this thing in the sky it looks like metal mm. glowing metal okay and they call it the angel of god it's okay. a ufo okay. <clears throat> who have been traveling which means it's flying in front of the army of Israel, <clears throat> excuse me, withdrew and went behind them. So it's now falling to a strategic position. Okay. All right. Okay. 
the pillar of the cloud, it's helping them fight a war. All right. And in the Bible, this is in the Bible. Another war. Another war. Another yeah. war. Yeah. <clears throat> the pillar of cloud had a beam descending from, you know, a, a pillar of a cloud is just a beam descending. Like in this UFO image, you see that beam? They call that a pillar of cloud. So what's changed <clears throat> today, though? What's changed? Most people think, yeah. why haven't the UFOs stopped wars that's happening mm -hmm. now? As though they intervened then well, or the extraterrestrial. I think that today. these beings came here in a time when we had fallen again technologically, because I believe that human beings had risen before okay. to high levels. They got here in a time when we were in this lower state, technologically and even spiritually. They took advantage of it. Okay. Uh, in the text, <clears throat> they say to them, they say that the creator of all will, 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 will punish them for this, what they've done uh -huh. here. Okay. In some way, they felt that they were, they knew they were doing something wrong. Hmm. All right. And they mentioned it several times that there's a creator of all. In other words, they ain't God. They ain't God. There's someone, something bigger. Someone. Even though they allow people to worship them as God, they masqueraded as gods. And so it's interesting that they knew that there was something bigger, yeah, bigger than them, but they weren't it. And mm. they take had taken advantage of the situation. And I feel I believe that at some point after the last pyramid war, uh, there was a decision made that we were not to interact with them. We're gonna keep a watch on them. Okay. I yeah. think they're watching us, but I don't think there's any interaction. They may be watching to see if how far we're gonna go and how fast okay. we're gonna continue to develop. We're like an abandoned seed colony. It's almost like they don't want us off the planet. You know, right. It's like they need to stay yeah. on Earth. Right. Yeah. And, we, and we're trying to get off the planet. So it's pretty interesting, right? Yeah. So you have that pillar of cloud, which is like a beam descending from a UFO. My personal opinion, right? My own hypothesis. Um, and then also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. So this thing is separating the two armies. Mm, okay. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness on one side and light to the other side. So neither went to the other night all along. So what, what it did, what it's saying is here, it divided the two armies and it blocked one army from being able to see the other army. So they couldn't go and interact and fight that night. Okay. It kept them separated, right? Wow. Exodus 33, 9, living translation. As he went into the tent, he's talking about Moses now, the pillar of cloud would come down and hover at its entrance while the Lord, which I think is an alien being, okay. spoke with Moses and gave him like military instructions. If you read this whole thing. Wow. These are my own interpretations. Yeah. yeah. And so the more you read this over and over and over again and bring it into modern, the modern idiom, you, be, be, you begin to realize <clears throat> we might be talking about something technological we might be talking yeah. about beings that are not really god that are interacting with us in some kind of way to i mean prevent or work this war for whatever agenda who knows and it's pretty it's pretty interesting so but then if you think about the average person now beginning to make these discoveries yeah. i think it'd be just too much i mean it, it but it makes sense to why christianity and all these are yeah. covering these mm -hmm. stories yeah could someone have said, wait a minute, we want to create a whole new story because they can't handle the truth. Right. Is that possible? It's possible. It's so possible. Trust me. It's really possible. Let and I got see. another question. Um, and, and you may can give me a little clarity. Yeah. You know, I've been doing my studying and just trying to. Mm -hmm. Most people think about the old slave song. Remember yeah. the swing low, sweet swing chariot? low, sweet cherry. That's a, that's a UFO. So it's a UFO story. Yeah. See, I asked someone else who said they was into it a lot. No, that was cold words from slave. I'm like, that was a hell of a cold yeah. if you are, or for the back channels <laughs> yeah. when they was doing the hair yeah. tub and stuff. So swing low, swing chariot, come and take me home. Mm -hmm. So they were, that's what they would have called you if it would have been a chariot. Yeah. They're out in the field and they're <laughs> yeah. like, swing low and get us out of take here. Take us out of here. Take us out of here. Yeah. Okay. And then come across the Jordan. What did I see? The angels coming. Right, right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. I just want to. Yeah, very says that. in the channel material, the law of one, Ra states he's positive polarized being, but hearing the history from you sounds like he's lying. You know, I have that law of one. I have the whole series of law of one upstairs okay. in my um, library. Um, I'm going to go to the library <laughs> right up there. <clears throat> I've read it. Um, I've gone through all of them. Channeled information is pretty interesting. You know, um, now I'm a person that likes to try to find good facts that I can piece together to come up with a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. I'm not a person that wants to say I channeled all my information. I don't. I don't particularly, uh, that's not my thing. That's not my lane. Okay. Gotcha. I stay in my own lane. 
but I do I it's do a, read that kind of information. Lane, it's a big lane. It's a big lane, you but I you know lane, I know yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. But I I, I I I try to base anything that I do talk about on at least some type of basis, some kind of gotcha. foundation. So I'm gotcha. not just going off the top of my head. And channelers are pretty interesting people. Um, and I do research and study their work, although it's just not my lane. I have nothing good or bad to say about them. It's just not my lane, so I don't get involved, you know, with what they do. But I do I, I research and study everything. As you can see, I'm not religious, but I know the Bible better than the pastor. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I can go, I can go toe to toe with any pastor. I'll go verse for verse throughout the entire Bible. I bet they have never read the book of Deuteronomy. Oh my God. It's probably not. You know. Um, what about uh, you know, I just want to share a little bit. I mean, you talked about Project Black, right? Yeah. And my whole notion of that is Project Black, as most don't know, is an acronym for the Black League of Alien Contact Knowledge. Mm -hmm. And it's not trying to exclude anyone. Yeah. I just feel that over researching, mm -hmm. being a UFO yeah. investigator, uh, not only uh, we've had uh, disproportionately a representation and stories, and the goal is to start the conversation. I'm just yeah. trying to start it on yeah. a right. basic level. Yeah. you know. And one of the things I discovered, Billy, was trying to find some UFO history mm. for a book I was working on. Yeah. And I was like, what the freak? And there's no... And that's when I start going back to the 40s, 50s, and mm -hmm. 60s. And, yeah. and at that moment, the only local reporting agencies would have been the local sheriff. Yeah. So what black person would right. have went to the sheriff department in those times <laughs> yeah. where you got the KKK all and said, yeah. by the way, yeah. I know you would lock me up for anything. I know. <laughs> I did see a UFO. Yeah. And then we had aliens abductions probably could have been noted yeah. and, and wasn't noted. So, right, right. And the only reason I'm saying this is that I feel that it's time to mm -hmm. start gathering up the people. Yeah. Right. The, the wanderers, I call them, mm -hmm. uh, and find a way to start the conversation. That's yeah. why I'm bringing it down to the basics mm -hmm. and, and just the stuff that we talked about tonight the, yeah. where anybody else can go talk with mm -hmm. someone. And then bring them into the vortex of forbidden knowledge, right? Where you now elevate them, and and I I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be a good movement to mm -hmm. do, yeah. uh, and just pretty much. And I know yeah. you'll support what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, where do I begin? I mean, we talking right. about the wonders. Where right. should I begin? Well, I think you're already on the right track with what you're doing. You're doing a phenomenal job with your podcast, with your your talks, your TV shows. You're showing the world that you can have the courage to talk about these topics. Yeah. Whereas as minorities, right, we've been, it's been shunned. Yes, yeah, it's, you know, it's taboo. On it's them, taboo. Right? Uh, you're crazy. You can't talk about it. I have people comment underneath some of my posts on social media. Black people don't talk about UFOs. Yeah. yeah you know, and that kind of, that's the mindset. And we have to break that, which is what you're doing. And I'm really impressed and proud of your work because you are, uh, a leading force in helping to break that mindset, especially with this new concept of a show that you're working on. And it's going to bring to the forefront a lot of people that are, as you call, wanderers yes. that need to get this off their chest. They need to, to talk about yep. what's happened to them, what they saw, what they felt, what interactions they had, and let people know it's okay to talk about this. That That's <clears> the whole thing. I yeah. just want them to start the conversation, right. let them know it's okay, and yeah. then just give them enough information uh, that they can read, something mm -hmm. they can see to yeah. awaken their possibilities to right. curiosity yeah. of what we're doing or curiosity to the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And then, bam, yeah. we hit them. Because by the time they get where you at and they get hit like psh, mm -hmm. bricks, you know, we, <laughs> we want them to get back up yeah. you right. know, and, right. and stuff like that. And I know we got to go, but uh, I want to share with people how we met. Yes. Okay. Our story. Um, I was on Clubhouse and, and I'll never forget. I was part of their Creators First program. Yeah. And true story, I'm calling around. I'm trying to get people on my show at the time, you yeah. know, and they gave me a thousand dollar budget. Yeah. And I'm calling people saying, hey, whatever. Yeah. And I end up getting your number. Yeah. He answered the phone. Right. <laughs> yeah. What's up? I says, Billy Carson. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? So I'm Robert Martin. And it was a pause. Like, I don't know you, <laughs> but yo, go ahead. Yeah. So I began to explain to you the story. I yeah. told you what I was up against mm -hmm. that. Being African American, I'm standing by myself. It's yeah. pretty hard. And then you was like, I, I got you. Yeah. And then I said, Well, I got a thousand dollar budget. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna give him the bread and, <laughs> and this should be an incentive. Same laugh that he's doing right now. It's like, so I'm like, damn, my money don't be. He's like, Man, I don't want your money. Yeah. You know, thousand dollars. You better keep it and do something. Feed the feed the homeless or whatever with it. You know, 
I'm like, right. yeah, it's like a thousand dollars. To me, I'm like, this is I'm gonna give you the budget. Right, right. And uh he was like, No, nah, man, I got yeah. you. Yeah. And uh and ever since that day, yeah. you know, we we formed our relationship and yeah. forged it and forged a, a a smaller circle that got stronger, even right. for me. Oh, yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And and oftentimes, nice. and I know sometimes we just have normal conversations mm-hmm. and most people will think that, you know, you just talking to everybody all day long, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it's not like that. You right. know, like today we, I mean, you, we just sitting out here, you barbecuing some, some good burgers, yeah. whatever kind of big old fat, <laughs> the burgers are like that tall. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what is that? And they, I mean, and he cooked them right. Yeah. yeah they weren't, yeah. they weren't burnt it. Or no. one, 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 one was charred. One was really, crisp. I like them like that. that was, that was oh, that me. was yours. That's mine. I asked Justin, I said, and, and James, I said, who is that one That's for? That's mine. Because it looked like it was made to order. Yeah. yeah so yeah. anyway, we you know you cook these big old burgers. So yeah. we had some hamburger and just sitting at the grill, just talking, right? Watching a little game, you know, yeah. and and everything else, and watching Liz and everybody mm-hmm. in a just a form of just natural. Yeah. Uh, and living a life that you live in a big life, mm-hmm. but just ordinary good people. And Appreciate so I just it. Thank want to you. thank you for being that, that you're not bro. way up here. Thank you. Bro. Uh, now, he ain't even for no bull. I look at that. <laughs> but at the same time, yeah. I just want to appreciate it. And yeah. I want to say that. No, no look, look. Hey, my hug, man. Hey, hey, man. All right. Thank you, brother. Hey, yeah. hey. He's we're, he's now on the management team, so we we're managing. Oh yeah, Roderick yeah. Martin right now. So we we are his manager. Forbidden knowledge is, is his manager. Yep. And so if you look in the book Roderick Martin for anything, you need contact business at forbiddenknowledge.com. Forbidden knowledge. We'll there we get, go. And we'll get you set up with Roderick. And Roderick, tell everyone where they can find you. Hey, you can find me right now in Florida in Boca Raton. And uh, <laughs> right here, GPS coordinates 10, 10, 20, 68, 56. But like a UFO, I will be gone uh, in days. But if you need to find me, hope that those coordinates work. But anyway, go to um, uh, Instagram, and that is going to be Real Roderick Martin. Yeah. That's going to be on Instagram. Find me on YouTube. Love for y'all to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and that's Roderick Martin at Why the Big Secret, mm-hmm. if all in the same. So yeah. between those two, but YouTube is what I'm really trying to hope. Mm. I'm about seven, 800 people from 12,000 subscribers. So maybe y'all can help me get there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we can do that in pretty much. So. That'd be great. At real. Yeah. Oh, real. There you go. Let's type in now. Real. Roderick Martin. Uh, yeah. And that's the Instagram. So I have an Instagram. Uh, got a couple of uh, followers there. Not yeah. as many, you know, but uh, we're going to build all of that mm-hmm. to right. say. But just either way. It's a, it's a pleasure being here. God. Yeah. And again, being my manager, you know, and it, and it makes the future mm-hmm. different because I know you all, you, you know, it's going to, you know, keep me fair. Yeah. Although I am doing a weight loss. So even though he's going to keep me fair, transformation. but I am, transformation. transformation. Yeah. Transformation. forgot. We're not doing that. We're doing the, not the word loss. And then my body's trying right. to find it. Conscious is trying to find right. it. We're doing a transformation. We're yes. going to release the weight. Um, and I'm gonna get some swag back and all yeah. that good stuff. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And they gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I got my feelings hurt feelings. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if they want to hear the story. Oh, well, we only got a few couple minutes. We okay, got... then I'm gonna cut the story. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> yeah, we have a new show coming out on Forbidden Knowledge. Yep. Roderick Martin and my sister Maria Carson. Maria is a four time world champion bodybuilder and yep. a nutritionist and a dietitian. And she's going to help Roderick through his transformation. It's gonna be an amazing series. You're gonna see this man transform. Back right to one of your eyes. <clears throat> and Charles yeah. just said happy birthday to Roderick tomorrow. Thank you. My birthday is tomorrow. Yes, so, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so make sure you follow Roderick Martin. Guys, I'm going to talk about the Conscious Awards before you get out of here. Let's do it. Vote for Roderick Martin. Yes. You can go <clears throat> vote yeah. for RoderickMartin.com in the podcast section. Definitely give me your vote, your support, uh, because I want to win. I, I want to win. I want to represent you. Uh, and everything else, the, the you know, whatever, but I want to be there. So vote for RoderickMartin.com. Uh, or Roderick, I'm sorry, leave off the, uh, the Martin. I'm oh. sorry, that was my bad. It's not oh, your fault. You said Roderick yeah, Martin. so it's actually vote for Roderick.com. I'm sorry, my bad. Let me redo it. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to redo it. Just click the link, then you're just going to go there. It's going to be the same original page as you were yeah. voting for anyone yeah. else. Yeah. Then just put Roderick <clears throat> mm-hmm. Martin, and there you go. Vote okay. for Roderick. Yeah. All right, great. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Thanks for thank being you, here. Man. I'm going to go eat it. a little, uh, you know, little healthy stuff. That yeah, they have in it's time to get day. healthy now. Yes. All right, great. guys, I'm going to play this commercial for the Forbidden Conscious Awards. I want to see you there. We're not going anywhere yet. Yeah. I'm still going to be here, but just watch this quick commercial for the Conscious Awards, and I'll be back on here. Real quick, 
just a few minutes with Chris Spencer. Hey everybody, it's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I wanna to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023, the Forbidden Conscious Awards, the first annual event of its type. We're gonna honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness, and guess what? It's time to give them their flowers while they're still alive. It's gonna be a live in-person event, but seats are gonna sell out very fast. You wanna make sure you're there in person for this amazing level event. It's gonna be above the Oscars, above the Grammys. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are gonna be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And you want to be there in person because I'm going to be speaking. That's right. I'll be your keynote speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Awards. If you want to come to a mini conference, this is the place to be because I'm going to give you the knowledge that night as well as performances. We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section and you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. And you help vote by going to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Go to the Conscious Awards link. You can text in a vote for who you want for any category, as well as if you're out of the country, you can use the web form ballot to still vote for anyone you think is worthy of being honored that night. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there. Forbidden Conscious Awards 2023. Wow, wow, wow. That's powerful stuff. So incredible, incredible, incredible. And um, we now have Elizabeth here. Hello, everybody. She How's popped everybody? in. Thank you for coming over. Yes, yes. What's right? going on, everybody? We're going to have Elizabeth uh, talk and, and with us, and we're going to have uh, Chris Spencer on here very shortly, a very good friend, a connection of hers. She was able to uh, talk to Chris Spencer about the Forbidden Conscious Awards and and uh, introduce him to me, and and he loved the concept and the idea and agreed to be the host. Yeah, yeah. It's really crazy, too, because, I mean, he's hosted huge, huge award shows before. Yeah. So to have him uh, over at the Conscious Awards will be just amazing. I mean, yeah. it's going to be amazing. He writes for all the the big award shows and everything. So, yeah. I mean, he... <laughs> Emmys, Grammys, yeah. MTV Awards, BET Awards. Yeah. I mean, you name it. This guy has been involved in all of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a really talented uh, yeah. entertainer. I mean, I knew him way back in the day when I was, I think, like <laughs> 19 years old, pretending yeah. to be grown <laughs> <laughs> and uh, going to these, these clubs and these comedy places. And he was always... Um, Always there and hilarious mm -hmm. and um, very respectful. He was always very, very respectful, yeah. very um, just just a good guy. So really, really great to have him. Um, and yeah, he's supposed to be hopping on here any second now. So yeah. yes, yes. Going to be interesting. So great time. So we had a good talk tonight. We had Roderick Martin on talking about are there uh, UFOs in the Bible? I hope you guys got something out of what we what we talked about. It was a lot of information. <clears throat> I'm going to be coming soon. I'll be talking about the book of Enoch and I'll be talking about Enoch in depth, who he was, what was, what was, what was he, what was he, what was he about his accomplishments. And also <clears throat> uh, I'll be talking about the fact that he was according to this text, taking up, taken up in a ship that left the planet, which is also documented in the modern day Bible. All right. So he was taking up from taken up from Earth and taken into space away from the Earth on a planned ordained day, day that he had set with his family. He had even given his children his books and records to keep on the appointed day that he was going on this trip in this vessel that took him up into space. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. So we're going to talk deep. I'm going to talk very soon about the book of Enoch and break it all down. The interactions between these beings and human beings and everything else that it talks about. And uh, it's going to be a powerful talk. So look for that one coming very soon. And right now, we're going to bring Mr. Chris Spencer on the screen here. Join us here tonight on this Forbidden Knowledge podcast. Forbidden Knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Take five. 
<laughs> what's what up, up Chris how you doing how you doing right, what's happening <laughs> I'm sorry y'all seeing my kitchen in the background Hold on, let me make <laughs> <laughs> it's okay man it's all right we all got it's, it's early so the roaches <laughs> <laughs> hey I grew up in a house where I know exactly what you're talking about what listen man we all did the, this when I grew up if you turn the lights on in the middle of the night you don't have to walk to the kitchen. They're going to give you a little ride on their backs right to the kitchen. Exactly. I remember one time um, uh, uh, what was I was living in Inglewood. Yeah, and I closed the back door and one of them came out and said, yo, why are you messing with the draft? I was like, talk. <laughs> yeah, what man. up, y'all? Oh, it's all good. How, how you been? I'm superb. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, nice. That's good. I saw you. Uh, you were at, or uh, you hosted something last night that was big or something. Yeah, you know I be doing stuff like that all the time. Yeah, doing, I know, just a little something, some here and there. So, Uptown Magazine um has their annual event, uh, an award show where they honor people in the industry, and this year's theme was comedy. Last year was Black Love, uh, mm -hmm. so it's me and my wife and four other couples. This year it was comedy. And so they honored Guy Tory, who created Fat Tuesdays, which went yeah. on to do amazing things on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the first, of course, a comedy show that was at the Comedy Store on Tuesdays <laughs> in the early 2000s and 90s. Then um, uh, they honored Cedric the Entertainer for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah. Kim Whitley and Dion Cole. So it was, it was an amazing night. Take it back there, please. It was star-studded. Uh, God, I wish I could show you pictures so you could see my suit. Wow. <laughs> but hold on, let me see, I, if I, let me see if I can find the suits. Hold on, I see you got a fresh cut right now. <laughs> I, you know, it's so easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I it's like I can do it by myself. I can do it with a hot knife. So I love the fact. Let me see. So oh, there's a picture. There's a picture with. You got it. A couple of us that got an award. I got you know the awards I gave out. I hope you guys can see it clear. Uh, maybe not. That's. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, okay, you will. So you see Cedric, Kim, yeah. Guy, and um, uh, uh, Dion Cole. Yeah. That better. Wait, where's the camera? Somewhere. There you go, right there. Okay, oh, yeah, that's yeah. a clean suit. That's and clean suit. there's that suit. That's, okay. that's clean. That's yes, super clean. Yes, Great crispy. double breasted. <laughs> Cedric, <laughs> Cedric, well, you know, a guy had on this dope pinstripe number. It was great. And then mm -hmm. Cedric had on this like purple, you know, Cedric has always been a great dresser. Yeah. You know, he, he's from St. Louis, you know. Mm -hmm. So he's yeah, probably he raised color. He's probably Fair raised color. by some he's probably, you know, his uncles and there was probably some pimps. So everybody <laughs> in the neighborhood is fly. The haberdasheries is fly. Right. You know? So Cedric look, he looked great. And yeah. Anderson yeah. was there. It was, I mean, Lil Rel. Wow. It was a great gathering of comedians. So yeah. we, we all support each other, you know what I mean? Nice, and nice. That's, great. that's what's great about our comedy fraternity. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's good man. because a lot of industries they don't they don't do that. It's all about competition. So yeah. it's it's good that that you guys now, have a group of we of we, we secretly be co competing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in a in a cool, friendly, yes. family type way. Like, yeah. oh, I gotta get my stuff together because he's done three specials and I still haven't done one. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, right. yeah. Does that sound exactly. like me talking possibly? Yeah. <laughs> So look, we're we're really excited about you coming down here. I mean, you're definitely the man for the job for the um, you know, the Forbidden Conscious Awards, the first annual. Yeah. Uh we're really excited today because we got a sample of the actual trophy today, which we can't show yet, obviously, but we got a sample of the trophy today. It's, it's heavy. 10 <laughs> inches tall, it's nine inches wide, and it's a gigantic solid crystal pyramid. With engraving on it, and it is just it's fire. It's immaculate. Yeah, it's fire. It's that one sounds of the nicest expensive. trophies I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds expensive. It weighs about. <laughs> it is expensive. Each one of the, it weighs about ten pounds. Yes. And and what we got to do is we've got to order them far enough in advance that in case any of them show up, because we have to have at least twelve of these things. In case anyone shows up broken or damaged anyway, or, or, or there's an error, we've got to be able to, you know, replace it. So we have right. to order them went far in advance to make sure we got it right. Gotcha. Uh, but this is, these these trophies are incredible. So guys, if you're listening out there in the chat right now, I'm going to drop the link right here in the chat. Go to this link in the chat and go and vote for your favorite conscious person 
in many different categories. I'll play the commercial again uh, in a second. But you need to vote by text message if you're in the U.S. If you're in, in a foreign country, you can vote by web form ballot. You can vote for as many people as you want in many different categories. We're going to count all these nominees. And then the top three nominees in each category will then be selected and be as being officially nominated for this amazing event. And then we'll have a second vote where you guys will help vote for the winner. We're going to make a special web page with all their information on it. Every single nominee, official nominees, you'll be able to research them, dig into their information, and make the decision whether or not you think they're worthy of the number one spot and win the, to win this award. And so you, you're going to want to do that. So, But it starts with you first voting for somebody now. We got to vote now. And also, don't forget to get your ticket to come to the award. The tickets are on the same link. We want to see you there in person. Chris Spencer hosting, Elizabeth presenting, and bringing out the trophies. What do you? What are your? What's your position called when you bring I, out that trophy? I'm just, I'm just the side person. That but you're gonna walk it. out there with that big trophy. <laughs> what they, they call that something? I hope I don't fall. Okay. It's, called, it's called a trophy girl, but I think she's more. Okay, than a that. trophy girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's more than that. But yeah, she's gonna come out in that fly dress and bring that thing across the stage. Uh, but it's gonna be an amazing night. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's gonna be dynamic. And by the way, Chris, we're giving away an Audi A4 for forbidden knowledge at the event live. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Can I win? I, am I allowed to win? No, I'm not allowed to win. No, you, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Nobody affiliated with Forbidden Knowledge or the company or okay. I, I had to ask. I was going yeah. okay. to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I got a dog just turned sixteen. I mean, you know. Right. <laughs> and the only way you can win the the car is it's based on your ticket, but you must be at the event in attendance. Yes. Right. So we will call the number, or your ticket number, live at the event, and the car will be in Miami at the venue with a big bow on top. It's going to be dope. amazing. That's yeah. dope. Yes, yes. I can't wait. It's going to be a, a, an amazing night. It's like these award shows are amazing already, right? The ones that are already out there. But it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be really, really amazing to see just the people that are out in the community really trying to make a difference in yeah. the world. Not saying that that the other award show people aren't doing that, but yeah. to specifically hone in on on people that don't really get the recognition ever. Right. That, you know, just to be able to to honor them and and yeah. really just just put their name out there a little right. bit more. I mean, these people are in the community working hard to make the world a better place. Right. And that's yeah. important. Yeah. <laughs> that's an important thing. Yeah. A lot of lives have been impacted. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do real quick, we're going to run the commercial real quick. Let everybody see the Forbidden Conscious Awards commercial. Hey, everybody. It's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I want to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023, the Forbidden Conscious Awards, the first annual event of its type. We're going to honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness. And guess what? It's time to give them their flowers while they're still alive. It's going to be a live in-person event, but seats are going to sell out very fast. You want to make sure you're there in person for this amazing level event. It's going to be above the Oscars, above the Grammys. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are going to be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And you want to be there in person because I'm going to be speaking. That's right. I'll be your keynote speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Awards. If you want to come to a mini conference, this is the place to be because I'm going to give you the knowledge that night as well as performances. We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section and you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. And you help vote by going to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Go to the Conscious Awards link. You can text in a vote for who you want for any category, as well as if you're out of the country, you can use the web form ballot to still vote for anyone you think is worthy of being honored that night. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there. Forbidden Conscious Awards 2023. Okay.
What do you think? Back. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> um, incredible. Chris, yeah. how did you how did you get to to host these different award shows? Like how did you right come into those? Stuff. Yeah. Those Look jobs. at me. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually hosted two award shows in the past week. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I did the Humor Mill Awards, which is another mm. online magazine that acknowledges comedians. And we gave a Lifetime Achievement Award to George Wallace and an Icon Award to Ralph Farquhar, who is the guy who actually uh, created Moesha, as well as the Parkers, oh, wow. the Proud family. It was, mm -hmm. He was my head. He was the showrunner on my show, Real Husbands of Hollywood. Mm. Um, and Earthquake got an award that night. So that was that night. Um, and people just know I'm, I, I, they, I have fun hosting and you can see it on my face. You know what I mean? So um, I, I'm, I'm able to come off the cuff quick. Uh, I'm very uh, uh, interpersonal. I know how to read copy. And yeah. I'm just kind of an old dog in this business. And everybody kind of respects me. Uh, I, I, everything our parents have ever taught us to be mannerly and, and treat yeah. others how you want them to treat you. And it's just kind of rubbed off in this industry and I get hired to do these things. Yeah. Amazing. That's what I was telling. I was telling Billy that before you jumped on here, that you were very, very respected in the business. That you've always been a very, you know how some people in their entertainment business are a little, but you've always yeah. been real solid, you know, just a real solid person. So ever since I've known you at least, and I know the, you know, yeah. just a, a yeah. solid, solid person in the business. Yeah. So yeah. Like I was we have another you, event. I'm hosting another one Sunday. It's a brunch. Mm. It's called the Influencers Brunch. It started by mm. myself, Anthony Anderson, and oh. a, a guy named Turk Stevens. It started in D.C. Mm. where we would have brunch after the BET Honors. And he's yeah. like, this could be something bigger. Mm. And all of a sudden, we did a big old brunch. And then the next year, we invited L.A. Reid to be our guest. Wow. And then the, the year after that, it was Will Packer and Malcolm Lee. Yeah. And then since then, it's been Byron Allen, uh, uh, oh, uh, wow. Kenya Barris. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Tiffany Haddish, yeah. uh, Charles King, who owns Macros. Uh, it's, it's just, it's just, it's been great. So, yeah, that's actually a brunch on um, nice. a conversation. Oh, so I'm sorry. And since it's the 50 years of hip hop, we actually are, our theme is hip hop. So we're gonna do D Nice mm. and MC Light. Wow. That's one panel, and then another one is gonna be Ralph Farquhar again because. Not only did he do Moesha, the Parkers, and Proud Family, but he wrote Crush Groove. Wow, so he wrote first, Crush Groove? The first movie starring some rappers. Wow, that's We're gonna crazy. We're going to honor him. And then also Mona Scott, uh, who's the creator of Love and Hip Hop, mm -hmm. and all its yeah. iterations. And so, yeah, that's going to be our incredible weekend. Amazing. Sad. Wow. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, this is going to be great. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we definitely have the right man for the job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. <laughs> so everyone listening, make yeah. sure you get your tickets and come down to Miami. Yeah. I'll be speaking that night. I'll be doing an actual presentation, something you don't want to miss. It's, miss, it's going to be so inspirational, so motivational, so intriguing, so deep. I'm going to make you think, but I'm also going to bring you up. I'm going to take you from here to here. I was about to give you a beat. You was flowing so nice. What? <laughs> <laughs> you better take you to here, uh, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> no hesitation across the nation. Man, <laughs> <whole truck>. Boom. <laughs> he do a little something though. If y'all ain't heard, <laughs> yeah, he I've was been across on, between. I've been on you were across between Biggie and Jesse Jackson right there. Biggie <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Jackson. Biggie Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, keep well, open mind. <laughs> keep oh, open mind. Yeah, you guys gotta you guys gotta come on down. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a great it's gonna be a great night. But seriously, in Miami, the Adrian Arch Center, Chris Spencer on stage, Jimmy Church also did, uh, talking about the actual nominees in depth because he's got a personal relationship with the, most of the people that are probably going to be nominated. He can talk in depth about what their accomplishments are. Uh, Elizabeth on stage, me, and also what we're gonna do too. There's a small group of people that helped me when I launched Forbidden Knowledge TV, that helped me by giving free content, just so I can have something on the platform for people to watch. I'm gonna honor those people. And also, we're gonna have a special honor for people that came to our last Egypt trip. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna bring them all yeah. up on stage at one time. Whoever's there in person, we'll bring them all up at one time on stage and we'll honor them as well. From our very first Egypt tour that we did with the 70 incredible souls that went with us to Egypt.
You're going to come on a tour sometime, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun. How many times have you guys gone? We did two tours already, but we went first to do some research for TV Network. But then the second time, we took 70 people on a tour. The next tour is coming up October this year. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be a 10-day tour throughout the entire of Egypt. We also have our own cruise ship to go down to Nile and stop some, some incredible stops off the Nile. We got our own plane this time. We have our own plane. We got everything. <laughs> we, we rocking and rolling, oh, man. Yeah. We ain't playing no games. Love everything it. is done with it. armed guards, armed security, military, and everything is VIP. When we go to the Great Sphinx and to the Great Pyramid, everybody got to go. All the tourists, y'all got to get out of here. Yeah. It's forbidden time right now. <laughs> it's forbidden time. And we go to the <laughs> Temple of Dendera, everybody, you got you to gotta go. I'm sorry. Get out. Forbidden time. Only the forbidden crews allowed here. And we're, you know, and so it, this is how we do it. We, we go, we go uh, military deep. We go with armed guards, and we get VIP status everywhere we walk throughout the entire place. Wow! Yeah, Fire. Yeah. 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 Things you can't do anywhere, like walk up to the Sphinx and touch the paw, touch the dream cell in between the Sphinx's paws, walk around the back of the Sphinx. We even have people climb underneath the Sphinx in the open channel underneath the Sphinx. Nobody can even get close to the Sphinx. The closest you can get, the average person. It was about 50 yards away on this on this um, ramp that they make you walk on to just look at it. You're never going to be able to touch it. Yeah, but, they shut down. Yeah. The, um, well, they closed the entry to the Great Pyramid and let us go into the King's Chamber and do a whole meditation up there. Yeah. I mean, we was up there for like, what, like an hour? About two? an hour or so, yeah. 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 It was wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It was cool. We yeah. got a lot of forbidden pull in Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 you said October? Yeah. It's not What's that bad. Like in October? It's about 80. It's about yeah, October's 80, like 80, 85. 90. Not too oh, bad. When does, get, when does it get crazy? June, July? Yeah, those are June, July. Well, June through September, you scorched. I mean, we've been there in 120 degree heat before. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. crazy. It didn't actually feel that bad though, because it was so dry. It's dry heat. You don't even know you, you don't, don't even really have sweat it. because the sweat evaporates before yeah. it comes on your shirt. Yeah. So right. you gotta keep sipping a little bit of water at a time to make sure you don't dehydrate because you won't even know you're being dehydrated. It'll just you just all of a sudden get dizzy and pass out. So, uh, but yeah, it, it gets hot, man. It gets hot. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'll make That's sure I go in October, November. Yeah. October, November, we're going to go to, we're taking a, a tour of people to Cambodia. So we'll take you to Angkor Wat, see uh, that great, incredible temple complex there, then go to Tao Prom and other ancient temples along the way. It's one of the most incredible tours also. Uh, hike up Cooling Mountain to a 90 meter waterfall and swim with the monks. Just an incredible trip. Yeah, Who are you? <laughs> I, 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 I've been around. <laughs> From roaches to pyramids, I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be incredible. It's gonna be incredible. Yeah. So you gotta, gotta come. Make, you gotta, gotta come on one of these trips. I got to because. I gotta even out my tan. Look, look, see, this is from golf. Look at this different color in my skin. <laughs> look, um, Morris, Morris, Morris always, you always play golf. <laughs> look, Morris, Boris. Yeah. <laughs> look, <laughs> Issa Ray, Lisa right. Ray. Right. <laughs> Issa Ray, Lisa, you're crazy. Listen, I, I would love Shabadoo, Shabaray. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to come on one of those golfing trips, though. <laughs> Do you play? Um, I golf with left clubs and right clubs. I'm equally as bad with both, but I give a good <laughs> equally effort. Equally as bad with okay. both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I give a good effort. You're ambidextrous? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really? can bowl left-handed, right-hand, shoot the basketball left-handed, right-hand, golf, left club, right club. Bat? Uh, bat, left bat, or right. Bat? And pitch, and pitch. Yeah. Yeah. She's seen, she's a witness. So I'm <laughs> and you, can, you, can you write with your left and your right? Yes, I can. Absolutely. Yeah. Just the same. Yeah. I can't yeah. even turn the dirt knob with my left. <laughs> <laughs> I'll even eat. If I'm sitting on the opposite side of her and I don't want to keep bumping her with my left elbow, I'll just eat with my right hand. You know? But but you're predominantly left-handed? Yeah, I predominantly left. Yeah. Like if you pull a jump shot, jump shot left-handed. Jump shot right-handed, attack the rim left-handed. Just like LeBron James, he he's a lefty. LeBron is a lefty, but he he shoots righty and attacks left. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so if you were to protect yourself and had to throw a punch, which hand would probably go first? 
depending on the way the person's standing. So I can go south paw or I can go, I can go with the right. I can go, I can switch up just by changing the position of my feet. It just depends on what I need to do at that moment. Which one's your and power I, hand? They're both the same. They're the same level. <laughs> and she's wow. seen me hit the bag. She's, yeah. she, she sees me go to the punching bags and switch up. So wow. she's a witness. That bag is going. And I'm two, I'm six foot four, 220. I mean, I'm not a super buff dude, but I got, I got some power behind it. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So I, let me write that down. Don't mess with him. Both hands can knock you out. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make a video. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put a video on social media uh, in several different sporting activities and hobbies, you know, switching up <clears throat> and let people see it, make a clip, make a reel out of it or something. I think people will love it. It'd be pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. I'd love to Just to get people to, to challenge it. themselves because we all can do it. You know, I'll, I'll read a book, a physical book. I haven't done it in probably about maybe six months though, but I'll read a physical book and listen to an audio book at the same time, two different books. And anyone can do this. It's just a matter of applying yourself and focusing on on retention of knowledge. And so, you know, now I'm up to probably, I was up to at 1.85%. Now I'm probably down to about 70 again because I haven't done it in about six months. But you can retain a lot of information and people, they doubt themselves that they can do something like that, but everyone can do it. People need to start using both their hands to do things anyways, because it creates new neural pathways yeah. that will lead into smarter behavior mm -hmm. all around. Brush your teeth huh. with your, your opposite hand. Yes. Creating yeah, a neural pathway. I might, I might cut my gums. <laughs> gotcha. You can start with something as simple as this, you know? Oh, I can do that. Rubbing your stomach and patting your head and then, you know, switch the hand. I mean, it's, you know, simple stuff, but it just builds new neural <laughs> I got it. Yeah. You got it. You got it. <laughs> but I don't know about listening to a book and reading a book. That's, that's, that's pretty No, hard. listen. So check this out. Have you ever turned on, did your homework while listening to the radio? Right. And have you ever knew the lyrics of the song that you were listening to while you were doing your homework? Right. You did. You already did it then. You already did the same thing I'm doing. But well, that's a song I know. And the chorus is coming that's quickly. Okay. Same <laughs> but thing. But I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it yeah. a shot. I got to learn how to read first. And then after that. <laughs> <laughs> read first. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, that's how it is, you know. So it's all good. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I gotta jump on Jimmy Church's show tonight. So yeah. if y'all wanna hop on over to Jimmy Church's YouTube channel, I'm gonna be talking about my new book, The Mother yes. Earth Effect. Chris, you gotta copy, cop a new book. Yes. I'm a, uh, I'm a, okay, Earth I'll Effect. read his and listen to yours. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you can do that actually. Well, thank you guys. I look forward right. to seeing y'all. Yeah. Yes. See yes. you soon, thank man. You so Appreciate much, you, brother. <laughs> Peace. Right. Peace. All right, guys, it's been an amazing night with Roger Martin. Then we hit, brought Elizabeth on. Now, then we had Chris Spencer. Yes. Oh, and don't and forget. Don't forget the, that I'm raffling off my car. Yes. And someone was asking how much horsepower. How much horsepower do you know? The horsepower in the C443. Google C43 AMG horsepower. That'll probably give you the answer. I, I never I never looked into the horsepower. Our car is fast as heck because you have the, the power to weight ratio. Yeah. Because yeah. of the, the weight of the car. <clears throat> oh, it's quick, speedy. Yeah, so the power to weight ratio is incredible. Yeah, and a portion of the proceeds will go to help underprivileged children, mm -hmm. CIS Michigan, Communities and Schools Michigan. Um, they help kids with backpacks and tutors and, and winter clothes because it's freezing out there right now. They even it's get like them off 10. the street when they're homeless. Yes, yes. They and do so only 10% only of the money is called, goes to administrative costs. 90% yes. goes to the kids. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Uh, they're, they they stay with their their mentors and their mm -hmm. tutors for years. I mean, yeah. they'll mentor all the way from middle school all the way to high school yeah. and beyond. So, exactly. I mean, they're dedicated people that work with this, yeah. this nonprofit. So. Check this car out.
right. That's the car right there. That's a Mercedes C43 AMG. It's a full warranty bumper to bumper by Mercedes Benz. All right. The car only has 13,000 or just less than 30, 13,000 miles. I mean, imagine a car brand with 13,000. It's a brand, brand new car. Yeah. It's in super mint condition. Super mint. It's incredible, and it's Detail just parked in the inside. garage. I mean, the, the red leather seats, yeah. it's, it's fire, you guys. Yeah. Super fire. The inside yeah. is like, boom. The sound system, it sounds like you're inside a song. Yeah, like Burmester. Yeah. The Burmester sound system, it's incredible. So click that link, guys. Get yourself a raffle ticket. Uh, you may have a chance to win a Mercedes brand new C43 AMG with the AMG wheels, the AMG exhaust, the AMG engine, and the AMG steering wheel. It's not a fake AMG where it just has the logos. It's the real AMG. <laughs> yeah. And it's warranty in full, bumper to bumper, by Mercedes Benz. You, it's hard to find something like that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's a good deal, guys. And it's, right. it's to help help children, and and you might get a chance to win it. That's right. <laughs> and it's, a, it's affordable. It's an affordable vehicle. That's right. Affordable. Like In other words, what she means is if you win it, you can actually afford to service it and keep it. Especially since it's under warranty. So anything that major breaks with the tra with the transmission or the drivetrain, the engine, blah, 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 that's all repaired for at no cost to you because it's fully warrantied, right? Yep, yep. Uh, and then up to, what, 60,000 miles, I believe. Yes. Um, and then, but stuff like uh, a simple oil change or a simple brake job, it's not going to break your bank. It's something that people can actually afford to keep. Yeah, the insurance isn't so bad either. Like no. last year, we raffled the the Rolls Royce, so insurance yeah. on that is what per year about a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, so I mean that's <laughs> not as affordable as, yeah. no. <laughs> as this car here. So yeah. yeah, check it out. But anyways, um, yeah, I gotta get on. Uh, we gotta go, Jimmy Church. So stuff. yes, we have to do a sound check with Jimmy Church. She'll be on Jimmy Church Radio yes. on Jimmy Church's YouTube account very shortly. But guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. We love you. We appreciate you, and we'll.